let me just take you really quickly through the topic of the day. I was talking about how to cast out evil spirits. And uh, I told you the first thing you do is put on the full armor of God. Go to a teaching that talks about how to put on the full armor of God. And then apply the blood of Jesus over your life. Or whichever way. You can start with applying the blood of Jesus and then you put on the full armor of God. Whichever way you like it, okay? After that, of course, the blood of Jesus, we've also taught about how to apply the blood of Jesus. Go to that teaching on YouTube or Facebook. One of our songs is really about how to apply the blood of Jesus. You can actually just sing that song and put on the full armor of God. Declare your environment holy ground. And then start dealing with the spirit based on their functions. Function number one, speech problems. It's evil spirit that make people lie. It's evil spirit that make people gossip. It's evil spirit that make people slander. If you cast the spirit out, the one that used to lie stops lying. You get that? If you cast it out, they'll stop gossiping. And they'll stop exaggerating. There are people who will never tell you things the way they are. If they have one dollar, they say I have a million dollars. Of course, there's, there's the confession beat of things. Calling those things that be not as if they were. But there are people who are just given to exaggeration. Everything to them. If there's a bit of an itch on their hand, the entire hand needs to be amputated. There's too much pain. Too much pain. My hand is aching. It's aching. It's just so much pain. I can't do anything. You see, a little thing is always exaggerated. It's a demonic problem. If you know people like that, they know it's an evil spirit messing around with them. Then there's deception. There are people who cannot help but deceive. They will make money through deception, like con men. They just lie to you. They deceive you. So many of you women have been married through deception. A man deceived you. He told you he loved you. He didn't. He just deceived you. That's a demonic spirit. You can cast the spirit out. Okay? And then, of course, there is a slander. There are people who can't help but say negative things about people. Especially now that people have um, free expression on online. The moment they see one post like this, the first thing they do is slander you. Remember, Satan is called the devil. And the word the devil means slanderer, diabolos, slanderer. So if you're slandering, it's not just that you have a demon of slam, slander in you. The devil himself is empowering you to minister for him. Especially people who have taken it upon themselves to say negative things about ministers of the gospel. Let me tell you, nobody would ever change because you slandered them. Nobody will ever change because you said something negative about them. Only the gospel of Jesus can change people. So talking badly about a minister of the gospel or talking badly against your president or your leaders or your boss or somebody, maybe even your parents... It's not going to change them. Slander is the ministry of the devil. And if you do it, then you'll accomplish his purpose, which is killing, stealing, destroying. And it's your mouth with which you slander. And the Bible says, it's by the words of your mouth that you'll be justified or condemned by the words of your mouth. So you've got to renounce it. You say, I renounce deception. I renounce doubt. I renounce unbelief. I renounce lying. I renounce gossip. What's gossip? It's important for you to know what gossip is. If you're talking about me to somebody in a way that's derogatory, that's gossip. It's slander and gossip. If you're talking about me and you're telling the truth and I appear onto the scene and you continue talking, then that's not gossip. If you're talking about me and then I appear and you change the topic. You're gossiping. That's why you're changing the topic. You are now afraid to continue talking. This is how I kill gossip. Apart from casting out the demons. If you talk to me about somebody. And you start saying negative things about them. Oh, they did this, they did that. And they're pretending to be good. You know, stuff like that. Did you hear? You know, heresy. If you're talking to me about somebody. Guess what I'll do? I will call them and put them on loudspeaker and I'll tell you now, carry on. In their hearing, I don't want you to talk in their absence. So they have a right to corroborate. So they have a right to say, okay, what the person is saying is true or not true. 
Now the moment I say, okay, let me call this soil and put them alive. No, 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 no. Ah, you're a gossip. So we need to get you to renounce gossip, and then we cast the demon out. If you're talking about somebody, you should be in a position to say the very same things in their presence without fear. Then you'll no longer be a gossip. Okay? Oh, I want to tell you something, but please don't tell them. They don't tell it to me. Because we are people who speak the gospel. The words we speak are supposed to help people. So if you're telling me something about somebody and you don't want me to tell that person that thing, then don't tell it to me. Unless your life is in danger, that's a different story. Unless the relationship is threatened to come to an end as a result. In that case, I will protect your privacy. You see, that's not gossip anymore because she came to seek help. He came to seek counsel. So you renounce gossip, renounce slander, exaggeration, sarcasm. There are people who are so sarcastic. You appear late, they say, yeah, the best timekeeper of our day. You have a demon. We're going to cast it out. Don't think by talking that way, the person will keep time in the future. No. The best timekeeper of our day. But what do they mean by that? That you are late. Yeah? British people are known for sarcasm. Very sarcastic. So if you're Brit, and your mouth is full of sarcasm, renounce it, get the demon out. Okay? In our African culture, we are known for exaggeration. If there is a, somebody had, you know, a detonation, wow, 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 that's how they start. Did you hear the gossip spirit is beginning to manifest? Did you hear what happened? The entire shopping mall is out. It's flattened. I, I, I saw it these two eyes of mine. My own eyes. I was not told. I saw yeah then you go to the mall you find only a bit of it is cracked <laughs> so an african it's an african problem but can i get another one this, it seems to be cutting on and off yeah can i use this thank you wonderful yeah that's better okay sometimes we just say that's better before you even put it to test have you ever been Ask when you're doing sound by somebody, please increase my volume. And then you just went and touched a knob and looked at them and they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> sound people are known to do that to musicians. Please increase my volume. They go and do something. And the musician says, one, two, one, two. Yes, yes. Great, thank you. <laughs> so what, what demon is that? <laughs> That's a deceiving spirit. <laughs> you deceive the musician. Now you can deceive without having the spirit. But if it is your... You can be a person who said something deceptive. But it doesn't mean you have an evil spirit. You get that? The only indication that you have an evil spirit is if it's become too much. It's something you can't stop. You deceive even when there's no reason. You are ever just lying. Yeah. So not all problems indicate presence of demons no it's when you're overwhelmed like if you're addicted to something you can't stop it then there's a demon there you see so the fact that your child lied does not mean they have a lying spirit because sometimes people lie because they're afraid you see the fact that you felt afraid doesn't mean you have the spirit of fear okay but if you're so if you're so scared that you're petrified you can't work Let's say your work is to be a musician and you get hold of the microphone and you begin to shake like that. You know, you shake until you can't do your work, then there's a demon there. Okay? But normal fear is okay. Alright? So demons make things exaggerated. Yeah? If you can't stop eating, then there's a demon of gluttony there. But if you just love your food, that's okay. You love your breakfast, lunch, supper, and you eat it well. There's no problem. But if you eat before you swallow what's in your mouth, you've already introduced another. And before that one, it's now stored, you know, you have a bank, banking system for food stored on this side of your cheek and then this side of your cheek is so full and this one is full as well. You're nearly choking in food and that's demonic. But loving your food is of the Holy Spirit. 
Because the Bible says it gives us all things richly to enjoy. Enjoying yourself is a good thing. Okay? All right. So these are called speech problems. Things that you say with your mouth, accusing people, um, criticizing people, telling on people so that they are in trouble. Yeah? I saw your husband. Yeah. I saw him. He was drinking. I'm telling you. So what, what did you go to do where people drink yourself, you Christian? That husband of yours who says, I mean, I saw him drinking. And he drank the first glass. And the drank the second glass. And the drank the third glass. I began to intercede for him. Come on, you deceiver, slanderer. That's the ministry of the devil. If you have a problem with this drinking, there and then you should have gone to him to say, Hey, man of God, what's with the communion? Yeah? What's, what's with the emblems? The man of God will say, oh, he's given me, you know, this thing cheers the heart of God and the heart of man. I just need to be cheered up a little bit. <laughs> but don't you quickly, like, I don't know if you guys ever watch Neighbors. There used to be a certain thing on TV called Neighbors. And there was always a guy, I don't think he had any job other than to snitch. He always peeped into people's compound and if he saw anything unusual, he's gone. He has to go and call somebody to tell. He, he was telling on everybody. Now that's demonic. Why don't you just mind your own business? If somebody appears, he has to report. He, he, he's like this. And quick, he has to report what happened. That's called a demonic spirit. That's the spirit of slander. A spirit of gossip. Okay? And then there are people who like to nag. They are nagging. You know, you might not even be nagging a person. You could be nagging the weather. Ah, it's so hot today. Ah, I'm feeling sweaty. Ah, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Hey, ah, ah, today, ah, just a horrible, that's an evil spirit. You are nagging the weather. Okay? If you're feeling hot, what ought you to do if you're a good entrepreneur? Fun yourself. Okay? That's what people feel hot to do. Get yourself a good fun. Or go into a shade. Okay? Solve the problem. Don't complain about it. Okay? There are people who come into your presence. Everything is wrong. The weather, it was hot. Now it's cold. The house is too dark. You put on the light, it's too bright. Yeah? That's demonic. Renounce it and cast it out. Okay? And then argumentativeness. There are people who will always win all arguments, even if they don't know what they're talking about. Somebody was arguing with me concerning talking in tongues. A guy who doesn't even talk in tongues. So how do you discuss the topic of tongues if you don't talk it? It's like discussing French and you don't speak the language. <laughs> you see? That because I don't speak French, French doesn't exist. Yeah? So there are people who I'm not talking about being a lawyer because a lawyer is not argumentative. A lawyer deals with matters in court based on facts and law. So if you hear them arguing a case, that's not being argumentative. They are using a set system of coming up with truth in a legal matter. That's not being argumentative. The argumentative one is the one that even when they are wrong, they still will not concede. Renounce it, cast it out. Okay? So even if you look at the book of uh, Ephesians 4.29, it says, don't, don't let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth. All right? Second Corinthians 18.22, there were a lying, a lying spirit entered into prophets. I think there were 400 prophets. And each of them started lying. And then Micah came and exposed the whole thing. And Micah is the one that told the truth. Okay? Jeremiah 23, 14. The Bible says, I've seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery, walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. None of them returns from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. So you've got to renounce. Now, being scared of hell is not going to change you. Oh, you're going to go to hell if you do this, you're going to do that. No. What's going to change you is maturity, growing. How do you grow? By the word of God. 
If one grows, they'll stop lying. Because most people lie because of fear. And if you've grown, you won't be afraid anymore. So first category is speech problems. Make sure that your speech is seasoned with salt. Second category, mental problems. Do you guys have anything you could contribute? Anything you could add or a question or something? My panelists. Please talk to them, right? I think you've explained it really well. Yeah. Thank you, baby. Oh, uh, yeah. We, uh -huh. Talk about swearing. Swearing. Yeah, I mentioned it. Cursing. The same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned it. Um, there are people who can't help but curse. If something goes wrong, for example, something falls down, instead of saying, oh, my phone fell down, you know what they say? Human waste. So what has human waste got to do with a fallen phone? Look at that. You're not only <laughs> having a demon of cursing, you also have a demon of confusion. That means you cannot do entrepreneurship properly. And even if you're good in entrepreneurship, it's someone else that will make it big, like Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders was known to swear at everything. For him, no human being was ever born of a human being. All human beings were born of female dogs. All of them, according to Colonel Sanders. Do you see? Wherever he was, he swore at all times. It's other people that took his beautiful recipe and franchise that made KFC big. He, he swore until he could not succeed anymore. Do you see? So if the phone has fallen, it's the phone that has fallen. It's okay to say, oops, that's fine. That's an exclamation that something you didn't like happened. Pick it up, hoping that it's not broken. If it's broken, what are you supposed to do? Solve the problem. Getting angry is not going to bring you a new phone. Save again, buy another one. Okay? Ah, I hope that helps. Yeah. Now, musicians are known usually to say things. The reason they say them is because the people they learned from were always swearing. But did you notice that if you're a musician, you're a prophetic person, you have power of influence with sound. So the devil will be very happy to use you to say negative things because you are influential. You can distribute that spirit to a million people in one song. You see? Well, that's why the devil likes to use influential people, people in the media, people in music, to swear. Okay? I hope that answers you. Yeah, so you just, no guilt, just renounce it, cast it out. Next is mental problems. So, these are caused by demons that attack and inhabit the mind and the brain area. Okay? They will cause tormenting thoughts and confusion. And they make you doubt God. So you deal with them by saying, I renounce and forcefully evict mind blockage. Some of you might be listening to a message like this and your mind is blocked. It's not working. You're not understanding a thing. If you renounce mind blockage and you cast the thing out, you'll be good. Okay? So mind blockage, mental torment. Thoughts that torment you. It could even be about business. But this thought won't go away. You're gonna, you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail. And this thought is, is not leaving you. Or you're gonna lose out. You're gonna lose out. And it causes you to be tormented until you can't eat or you can't even sleep. You get that? And then there's negative thoughts. Wherever you go, your thought is always on the negative path. You get into the car to drive. The first thing in your mind is an accident is gonna happen. It's a sign of a demon. Negative thought. Yeah? It's raining and you're thinking there's going to be a flood and it's going to sweep us away. You see? The sun comes out. Oh my goodness, our crops are going to all die. Oh, there is going to be war. Somebody sneezes around you. Oh, oh, they have corona. Negative thoughts. You're always quick to go to the negative aspect of things before doing proper investigation. To establish the truth okay so 
That's negative thoughts. Filthy thoughts. Wherever you go, it's dirty things that fill your mind. They just fill your mind. You could be singing, Jesus, Jesus, the name above all names. And a big, filthy thing enters your head. So I renounce you, Jesus, they might cast you out. And carry on with your, the name above all names. Okay, you don't let it stop you. All right? Condescending thoughts. You see somebody, you think, I hate his nose. You always hate people. You look at your boss, he's too short, too tall, too fat, too thin, too this, too that. And some of you probably are watching me now, the ones that like talking about our dressing. Yeah? You're so envious that we are posh that you have to criticize the dressing. You have a demon and I'm going to help you cast it out today in Jesus' name. Yeah? Look at them, they're always so stylish. Their women dress so nicely. Their women always wearing short things because they don't want to wear the long, boring ones. Yeah? <laughs> Yours is ugly because you made them ugly by your negative words. Speech problems. So we cast it out in Jesus' name. So that condescending attitude always trying to pull people down. You create a beautiful song. They listen. Others have clapped for you. You're feeling so good about your piece of work. Then this one, this one shows up. According to my opinion, oh, you just know what is coming next. Condescending. Uh, I think you've copied too much. You've copied some musician they know too much. It doesn't sound original to me. It's a condescending person. Always pulling people down. If, you, if you're like that, renounce that condescending thought. Especially against yourself and against people. You see, the reason they talk that way is because they've already completely pulled themselves down. So they want you to join them. Uh, if, if you notice when people are going south, they want a company. If someone is failing in life, they think everybody else should fail. Yeah? So you've got to renounce condescending thoughts, okay? And then hopelessness. I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. Sometimes people text me. I tell them, you're healed in Jesus' name. They say, I've been prayed for before. It never worked. Ah! Hopelessness. You see? Yeah, you were prayed for before. Okay, believe in this one now. Or at least, can you appreciate that I could be the harvester? Of the combined prayers of all the people that have prayed for you concerning the matter. Maybe my prayers will be the last one that fills the cup and your healing happens. I haven't prayed for before. I've been told that before. I've gone to uh, probably all deliverance ministers in town. So why did you come to me? You go to all of them and nothing happened. So what makes you think something's going to happen here? It's called hopelessness. Renounce it and cast it out. Okay? Migraine headaches, it's a mental problem. Migraine headaches usually affect you because of thinking hopeless thoughts. Tension headaches. Tension headaches will come because you're stressed. You allow things to stress you. Yet the Bible says be careful for nothing. Anxious about nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. You will solve it. If a problem comes your way, God is trusting you. Because problem, problems gravitate towards their solutions. So don't be stressed about a problem. You will solve it. That's why the problem came your way. Okay? If you're stressed about it, you're going to have tension headaches and migraine headaches. And then an evil spirit will get in there to make it so painful that you can't sleep. So you renounce it and cast the spirit out. Okay? Insanity. Madness. Mental confusion. So you say, I renounce and forcefully evict mind blockage, mental torment, negative thoughts, Filthy thoughts, condescending thoughts, hopelessness, migraine headaches, tension headaches, insanity, madness, mental confusion, and I declare that I have a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. That scripture can heal brain tumor. Because a brain tumor, a brain tumor is messing up with your brain. The part 
of your body that the mind uses to do its work. Okay? So by declaring you have a sound mind, you can heal a brain tumor. Then wrong belief system. Can I say something? It, yes, baby. Uh, yes, baby. You know, the, the scriptures declare that as a man thinks in his mind, so is he. Mm -hmm. So when people have mental problems, their life is totally thrown in disarray. Yeah. And also that also, uh, I mean, those are the same demons that will cause wrong meditation. Wrong meditation, yes. Yeah. yes. Uh -huh. We're supposed to roll the word of God in our minds continually. Mm -hmm. But if what is rolling in the mind is continually negative thoughts, pulling down thoughts, condescending thoughts, yeah. then the life takes a, a wrong turn. You, you go negative, negative consistently. Yeah. yeah, very well put. That's my baby right there. Beautiful as ever. All right. Now, next category of demons, wrong belief systems. Category of evil spirit. So these are doctrines of faith systems and practices that are against the revealed word of God. So you could even be a preacher, but preaching wrong things. To that extent, you're being used by an evil spirit and not by the Holy Spirit. So you say, I renounce and forcefully evict. To forcefully evict is the same as casting out. It's the Greek word ekbalo. To evict with force okay you got to force them out they never want to leave you got to force them out so you say i renounce and forcefully evict manipulation manipulation <laughs> it's a false belief system you want this is now where witchcraft is okay i forcefully evict manipulation intimidation domination discouraging words false accusations although false accusation comes in the category of, of uh, wrong use of speech, but it's also a wrong belief system. You notice the Pharisees accuse Jesus falsely. So most religious folk accuse people falsely because they have the demon of false accusation. The people who think their denomination is the, is the only good denomination, there's no other. So if you're not a Seventh-day Adventist, you're going to hell. If you're not a Catholic, you're going to hell. If you're not an Anglican, you're going to hell. If you're not a Baptist, you're going to hell. If you're not Presbyterian, you're going to hell. If, you, if you're not something that they are, you're going to hell. That's a false accusing system. So your system is a false belief system. Because people can be different from you and still be right. Okay? So... Witchcraft. I think last Sunday we talked a lot about witchcraft. Yeah. So you say I renounce and evict manipulation. What is manipulation? Manipulation is a demonic tool that a weak person uses to control a stronger person. So if you're dealing with somebody you're scared of and you want something from them, you probably will manipulate them. This is what Delilah did to Samson. Samson was too strong for Delilah and the Philistines so Delilah came and said, you don't really love me, do you? And she just stuck there, war of attrition. You don't love me. If you love somebody, you have to be frank with them. If you love somebody, you have to open your heart to them. You've got to pour out your heart towards them. Here you are, a strong person, my strong man, yeah? The strongest man in the whole world. Am I, am I not privileged to have you as my husband? The strongest man. But guess what? The strongest guy will not tell me the source of his strength. And he still says he loves me. No, you're treating me like everyone else. I'm not special to you at all. I'm not going to eat today. No, I'm not eating. Come on, babe, babes, babes, babes. Come on, eat your sandwich. Come on, babes. I bought this especially for you. Yeah, the same way you buy for all the other women. Yeah. If she was a Nigerian, she would have, she would, she would have put that thing. What is the chew thing that they do? <laughs> yeah? Now, she nagged. I see another spirit. Spirit of nagging, yeah? She nagged Samson until Samson told her a secret that was not meant to be told to anybody. And she had proved to Samson two times before that her aim was to get him killed. But look at how she successfully manipulated the strong person until the strong person became weak. If you're a manipulator, renounce it. Say, I renounce manipulation and I command the spirit of manipulation to leave me. Okay? Intimidation. Intimidation is used by a person who is scared of you 
So like a dog, they'll bark. Woof! To scare you. So that you can do what they want. Yeah, two in the line, I'm going to take my grace away from you. A lot of foolish prophets use that intimidation. That if you do what I say, oh, I'm going to remove grace from you. And if I remove my grace from you, you're going to fail in life. Now, just always slow down and think. Before you met that prophet, how dead were you? And how much of his or her grace was operating in your life? Yeah, you may have been suffering, but you're alive. Not everything was wrong with you. So now that you've met this intimidator, you can't breathe because the man of God is going to take away their grace from you. That if you disagree with the man of God, you can't fight grace and wind. That's witchcraft. Wrong belief system. Anyone can fight anybody. Whether they win or not is neither here nor there. So you can disagree with me. It's okay to disagree. It's okay. You won't die because you disagreed with me. But if I begin to intimidate you saying, I'm a man of God, I'm going to use my power and you'll be dead. If you, if you disagree with me, that's called intimidation. It's a demonic thing. It's not of the Holy Spirit. You must not be intimidated by any man of God or any woman of God or any leader. It doesn't matter how powerful they are. Because that's witchcraft. I hope you've understood what intimidation is. Then domination. Domination is done mostly by narcissists, even intimidation. People who, who have a distorted view of their self-importance. So they walk into a place and they take over. Even if it's not their responsibility to take over. If they come into your area, they've taken over, they've chained all the songs. I've dealt with people like that. They come into your environment and they want you to do their song. They want you to preach their message. They want to control everything. It's called domination. We've not been called to dominate anyone. We've been called to dominate the earth, not people. Okay? All right. What else do we have? Discouraging words. There are people who will always discourage you. I think we've mentioned that in speech problems. But they somewhat overlap. False accusations. The Pharisees again. Yeah? Bondages. You see, a bondage will occur when now you're afraid to lose that grace of the man of God. So you are in bondage. You're stuck up with the man of God. Because the moment I leave this church, I'll be cursed. But you are fine before you join the church. So you can also still be fine after leaving the church. There is no law that states that if the most anointed man in New York town is your minister, there's no law that states you can't leave them. You can still leave them and still be successful. Okay? Then pulling others down. Rebellion. Spiritism. This is now using ancestral spirits to do your thing. Like doing witchcraft and going to witch doctors to bless you and things like that. Ancestral worship, satanic blood covenants. A lot of people who do initiation like circumcision, piercing of ears and things like that. A lot of people who do these things do them in a shrine. So it ends up becoming a spiritual belief system. There's nothing wrong with circumcision or piercing of the ear or even tattoo. There's nothing wrong with those things. But if you do it in a shrine, and a shrine is always manned by a person who has spiritual power. So when they're done doing the tattoo, their spirit will enter you. So if you can do it in a cleaner environment, if you can do it in a place where the spirit of God reigns and rules, that's okay. But most of the places where you find either somebody's going for circumcision or going to be tattooed or some body marking or some piercing, you'll find the person is speaking incantations, chanting something. Yeah. In fact, um, there is a business war story that I listened to, and I'm not going to talk about it so openly. It's not the topic for the day. Where the guy who was tattooing people was actually using his urine as, as the liquid that he'd mix with other ingredients. And he actually said it. So now, by the time somebody is using such things, they are in witchcraft. They are no longer following God. So these are false belief systems, okay? Um, and then you have... So these are what we call satanic blood covenants because your blood comes out of your body 
And the person doing this thing in your body believes in demonic spirits. And spirits love blood. That's why the spirit of God loves to hear about the blood of Jesus. Okay? And this explains why a lot of women have trouble during their menstruation because the blood is coming out of your body. And demons like that. So that's the moment they are really harassing you. You renounce it, cast the demon out and you'll be fine. And then we have evil soul ties and curses. Evil soul ties develop when somebody has scared you to the extent you're now dependent on them, trying to suck up to them to please them. That's an evil soul tie. So when this person is depressed, you feel depressed too. This happens with sex partners. It also happens with people who've eaten together for a long time. You develop a soul tie. Your souls are knit together. David had a soul tie with Jonathan. That was a good one. They loved each other so much. That's what friendship is. It's a soul tie. Your soul is tied to the other person. So you become great friends. So you miss each other. If you don't see each other for a while, you miss each other. But if your soul is tied to a wicked person, uh oh, when they're doing wicked things, the demons will use that soul tie to fill you as well. So you renounce it and break it in Jesus' name. Okay? Then unscriptural religions and denominations. Uh, how do you know a denomination is unscriptural? If they only take one part of the Bible and predicate everything upon it, that's unscriptural. For example, if a denomination or a faith system is based only on Holy Communion, then they are wrong. So, oh, before you go to bed, take Holy Communion. Uh, be, before you get into the car, take Holy Communion. So you have to walk with Holy Communion. Then you know you're in a wrong belief system. They exaggerate certain truths at the expense of other truths. So they're not balanced. You get that? If you find a group of people insisting that women must wear a headgear and a certain type of dressing. That a woman must cover her head, for example. It's a must. Then you know you're in a wrong belief system. Okay? If you're in a place where they say only men can preach, women cannot preach. They've taken one strand of what Paul said and created a doctrine out of it. That's a false belief system. Okay? In a place where it is a must, for you to be celibate, to be a preacher, it's a wrong doctrine. Because Paul was not married, but he didn't tell the whole church not to be married. How would we then fill the earth according to what God said we should do? If all saved people should not marry. So if a minister of the gospel, if it is a rule that you cannot marry, then that's a false belief system. I know I'm touching some nerves here. And I will do it very boldly. Okay? And then idolatry. Idolatry could even mean worshipping your musicians and your Hollywood actors. To the extent you actually call them idols. Yeah? But idolatry principally is worshipping things that are not God. It can be money. It can be an object that you have. Yeah? It can be your talent. Just renounce it. Legalism. Legalism is when you think that you need to be good for God to love you. It's as simple as that. I did something wrong, now God hates me. God's going to cast me into hell because I did something wrong. Oh, I did pray today, so God must be angry with me. That's called legalism. Our Christian faith is based on love, family love. And if your family loves you, even if you're a drug addict, they will still embrace you. That is our Christian faith. We are not in legalism, we are in grace. Okay? So if somebody says, I'll take grace from you, then they're legalistic. You see, how do you, call, how do you talk about grace as a family loving power of God? And then you decide because you disagree with me, I'm taking my grace away from you. Then you'll be exposed out there and the devil will attack you. That's not only a lying spirit, it's also an intimidating spirit, a domineering spirit, but also a narcissistic spirit. Defy and you will not die. Okay? The last one for the day. It looks like we, we'll, we'll have to do this for a number of Sundays, yeah? These are called problems of maturity. So these are mostly strongholds or thoughts of inadequacy and they make people struggle to prove, to prove themselves.
to compete aggressively when, necess when, when not necessary and to defy authority. Problems of maturity. So you say, I renounce. Did I give you scriptures for false religions? First Samuel 28 verse 7. False belief system. Here Saul goes to the witch at Endor. Because he needed to be charged spiritually. So he had to go to a witch. This is what makes people do witchcraft. Oh, by the way, let me tell you something more about witchcraft. To be bewitched does not necessarily mean somebody has gone to a wizard or a witch or a satanist to curse you. Any moment you speak negatively about people, you're bewitching them. The word, the Greek word is baskaino. In the book of Galatians, Paul says, all oh, foolish Galatians, chapter 3, isn't it? Isn't Galatians chapter 3? You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? The word bewitched there is baskaino in Greek, and it means who has slandered you? Who has been talking negatively towards you or against you? So talking negatively in itself is witchcraft. Ah, I don't like the way she walks. You're already doing witchcraft. You see? Ah, I don't like the way he talks. Look at him. Now he got a job. He's posting to everybody. He has money. I don't like the way his car makes so much noise in the evening. He thinks he's the only one with a car in the estate. You see, you're practicing witchcraft already. Okay? Okay, let me deal with the last one. Problems of maturity. So these are mostly strongholds or thoughts of inadequacy. So, one of them is pride. So you say, I renounce and forcefully evict pride. What is pride? Pride is when you depend on what you have and what you know rather than depending on God. Okay? If your confidence is in what you have, like your money, or what you know, like your education, if that's where your confidence is and you're proud, pride is not body language, walking style. I can, I can preach to you like this. And somebody will say, look at him, he's proud. You see, you're judging naturally. You go to judge spiritually. It's called dokimazo, looking at things in the spiritual. This is just a posture. I decided to push my chest forward and my shoulders this way, and I looked down that way. What if I was posing for a selfie? Yeah? I said, look at that man. That man is proud. No. Yes, it's true that when we are casting out demons of pride, they make people go like this. But I could also be a very good actor or actress. You know? I can be a person mimicking somebody for a living. You understand? So pride is where your confidence is. Where is your confidence? Where is your trust? What do you trust? Your car? Your bodyguards? What do you trust? Your education? Do you trust medical doctors more than you trust God? Then that's called pride. So what's humility? When your confidence is upon God. So even if you talk through the side of your mouth, hey guys, come on guys, hey, what's happening? I've come to release power upon all of you, hey, hey, come on. If you want to receive it, laugh twice, hey, hey, come on, let me hear you, hey, hey. Some would just say, that guy is crazy, but is he just, that's just his style, okay? Are you getting that? That's not pride. As long as that person has their confidence based on the God that they know, the God of heaven and earth. That person is humble. So humility is confidence in God. Pride is confidence in what I have and what I know, or who I know as well. If I have to thump my chest and tell you, do you know who you're talking to? It means my confidence is in my ability. So to that extent, I'm proud. Okay? And if I were to tell you, you joke around with me, I report you to some big guy town. Then my confidence is in that big guy, not in God. So that's pride. So you see, it's so different. What we have judged as pride wasn't pride at all. You, you're just judging very good actors and actresses. Thespians. You're judging thespians. Yeah? Are you getting it? Have you ever met somebody and you didn't like their facial features at first? You thought, this guy looks like a, a chameleon. 
Because one of his eyes looks this way, the other one looks this other way. And then after just a few days, you think, what an amazing human being. Because you've got to know what's in them. So don't judge from out there. Judge based on words. Okay? So that's called pride, yeah? What else do we have? Then criticism. I've never met one successful critic on the face of the earth. And I'm talking about people who wait until you build your business and then they tear it down. They wait until you're married and then they say, ha, ah, after all, you're married to a widower. That guy is not fresh. Oh, you married a woman with five children. You see, they wait until you've done something for them to bring their opinion there. They wait until you've started a church. They say, there are only two people there. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bula. <laughs> Mr. Bula. <laughs> I went there, only two people. <laughs> yeah? So, are you getting that? It's a critical term. Yeah? Why, why can't you just play normal music, man? Play normal music. You know, because this guy likes to play something called Bebo, a very complicated aspect of jazz. He loves it. If you don't like it, why do you stick your demonized ears there? <laughs> yeah? Why don't listen to what you like? Why do you come to him to say, no, you're too complicated, what's wrong with you? It's a critical term. It's a demonic problem. Okay? Problems of maturity. You're immature, that's why you're proud. You're immature, that's why you criticize. Okay? Then there's arrogance. An arrogant person doesn't even have to talk to you. They just need to laugh and you know they're arrogant. Yeah? You bring them food and you serve it and place it there. They look at the food and they go, <laughs> Okay. They don't have to say much. They are so arrogant, they are despising your food. Your food is low class, you are low class, and I don't have time to waste even telling you. Let me just laugh. <laughs> uh, is that food? And they look away. Arrogance. Renounce it, cast it out, okay? And sometimes people do those things and because they're so anointed, people think anointing covers you and you're arrogant or proud. It doesn't cover you. Okay? And then, cold treatment. Do you treat people coldly because you didn't get what you wanted? A man wants a woman. The woman refuses. He stops talking to her. Cold treatment. Do you have to force everybody to like you? Huh? Yes, I know you have biceps and triceps and forceps. Is there another seps? I thought bi is two, tri is three, quadruple, and septet, seven of them, octet, eight of them. <laughs> and you thought by flexing your muscles and wearing a muscle shirt, all oh, the women should be swooning over you. Ooh, ooh. This particular one doesn't want to talk to you. This particular one doesn't want to give you her number. So do you treat them badly and you start ignoring them each time because they didn't say yes to you? That's a demon. Okay? Cold treatment. Somebody, probably you told them something they didn't like. They don't want to talk to you in the future. They hug everybody and they don't want to hug you. If you say good morning, good morning. they mumble something. Like some politicians. Cold treatment. Withdrawal. We disagree. Now I text you, you blue tick me. I text you, you read the text, you don't respond. You've withdrawn from me and I can feel it. There are people who are good at it. They pull themselves away from your life until you lose appetite. It's a demonic problem. Renounce it. Okay? Revenge. I don't need to explain that. Distrust. Setting people up. They set you up to fail and then they feel good that you're crumbling. Yeah? Betrayal, backstabbing, conmanship, stealing, 
perjury. That is wrong witness. Perjury. Presumption and vain glory. Presumption is assuming to be what you are not. Okay? Vain glory same as vanity. You value things much more than people. You renounce those ones, okay? And this is what we find in Job 41 15. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. This is Leviathan, the spirit responsible for all these problems of maturity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll pick it up from dead works next time so that we teach you how to deal with all these demons. Now, I'm going to post this on, the, on my Facebook page and there's a prayer towards the very end. But I need you to pray. Read all that are typed and then say um, if you go to the very end of the teaching, I'm going to post it so you'll be able to see it. There's a prayer you're supposed to say there. And the instructions are given. For you to be delivered, spirits, demonic spirits are like air. The Holy Spirit is also like air. They enter like air, they live like air. For you to be delivered, all you need to do is after renouncing, I renounce lies and I evict it forcefully. I renounce pride. After renouncing it, you deny it authority to remain in your body. Because spirits collaborate with you. They operate by faith. You have to have faith and trust in them for them to operate in your body. I'm talking about all spirits, whether demonic or holy. If you renounce the spirit, it no longer has a right to stay in your body. For that reason, if you command it to leave, it will leave. So having renounced and having said I expel, all you need to do is breathe in and out vigorously for about 15 to 30 minutes. Vigorously, I mean. Yeah, like, like that. And you do that for about 15 to 30 minutes. As you do it, it sounds easy, but as you do it, you might start sneezing, which are signs of deliverance. You might yawn, burp, cough, sometimes even vomit. You might start feeling itches all over your body. Yeah? You might feel heat rising from your belly. Very hot stuff. You might feel you're being choked. If you feel like you're being choked like that, you're dealing with the spirit of death or suicide. You see, you might suddenly feel very angry and agitated. You're dealing with the spirit of anger. And during such moments, don't listen to that spirit. It's coming up. Because if you listen and collaborate with the spirit again, you might beat someone up. Yeah? I remember doing deliverance on one lady one time in a certain country. And this lady had a, a cobra spirit in her, serpent spirit. So the moment I said, in Jesus' name, come out, she began to spit like a snake. And she was accurate. She would aim. If you didn't duck, the thing would land on you. She just, she's just aiming at everybody with a spit, you know. By the grace of God, she was ultimately delivered. One of my uh, um, brothers in faith was delivering a lady from the spirit of violence. I'm telling you, that lady tore the man of God suit and gave the man of God a good kick on his cheek the man of God fired his entire protocol as a result it was painful so the reason people act the reason they manifest demonic things is because they are collaborating with the demons resist the devil and he'll do what flee so if the demon is telling you, hit the man of God, resist you coming out in Jesus' name and keep breathing in and out. If the demon is saying, run, because sometimes people just take off and run away. Say, I'm not running. I'm not running. The only, the only race I will run is the, the, the race of faith. Not running because a demon tells me to. So don't listen to what the Spirit is suggesting very powerfully inside you. Beat somebody. Scream. Yeah? Strip. Sometimes the demon will tell you to Remove your clothes. You've seen those things on TV, haven't you? Don't listen to that. You hear the Holy Spirit, not demonic spirits. And if you stay put, they will ultimately come out. Okay? But of course, this is a case where somebody has really been steeped in demonic things. Mostly, you will not even notice they're coming out, but they do come out. Okay? So that's at towards the end of the teaching. If you go and read the instructions I've given, it will help you 
cast demons out of your own body and out of someone else's body. To stop demons from being violent, causing people to move like snakes, that's a serpent spirit or hiss and all those things. Renunciation is the key. If you've renounced that thing, then the demon will no longer have power over you. All right? If you have any questions you can ask, we'll be happy to answer you. If you're watching and you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose again for my justification and acquittal. Today, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am now saved. Glory to God. If you have prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. Saved indeed. And you can cast demons out of people and out of your own life. Let me see the people who have been watching us. Daisy Quinga, God bless you. Love you so much. Um, I can see Terry Lynn is online too. She says, I'm listening to podcasts on stocks and investment. And I can feel spirits trying to come against me to stop me from understanding. I renounce it. That's right. That's called a mind blockage spirit. Okay. Uh, Pali Eric says, I'm learning so much today. So many things I ignored. Franz Mepe says, what is the name of a spirit or demon that keeps us from praying or delay praying or lazy to pray and postpones us from reading the word of God? Oh, it's called the spirit of slumber. Renounce it. The spirit of slumber. When you want to pray, you feel bored. When you read the Bible, something else comes up. Or you, reading the Bible, you just fall asleep. Or when you're supposed to listen to a good message, a nice movie comes up instead. It's the spirit of slumber. It's also a deceiving spirit. Okay, this is now the, the, uh, the broadcast we just did earlier. Let me see who is online right now on this present one so that I can acknowledge you before we go and please make sure you're sharing this with your friends okay glory to God I'm looking for it where is it do you have anything on your phone oh was it, oh did it just continue oh yeah okay okay yeah here it is here it is Glory to God. All right, please share this with your friends and make sure that they're blessed as well. I'm going to uh, upload this on YouTube. We're not on YouTube right now. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Blessings.